Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is James and you're watching Wonderful World. And if you watch my channel, then you know that I love frogs. And in our vast ecosystem on Earth, every animal and creature has a role to play in maintaining a balance. And while frogs may seem like a small part of that, their importance is much greater than you might think. Frogs lower our rate of disease by eating mosquitoes. They serve as food for birds and fish and their tadpoles filter out our waterways by eating algae. And frogs and toads, just like so many other animal species, are suffering from a decline in numbers. And this is due to environmental problems, climate change, and human factors, and shows that changes we are seeing in the environment are signs that something is wrong. But we can all help to protect and care for the frogs around us by attracting toads and frogs to our yards and gardens. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a simple and inexpensive way to create your own frog conservation area in your yard or garden. You don't have to have an elaborate garden and you don't have to make a huge pond in order to attract toads and frogs and give them a sanctuary where they can safely live. You can do this in any secluded spot in your yard or garden as long as you provide the right conditions. Here are a few of the frog conservation areas that I've created in my garden years ago. I spend a lot of time out here in the garden, either just pulling weeds or just enjoying the flowers. And once summer is here, I see toads and frogs out here nearly every day. Most often either American toads or pickerel frogs. And I love knowing that it's more than just a garden. It's also a sanctuary for birds, rabbits, chipmunks, and for frogs and toads. First and foremost, if you want to attract and care for the frogs around you, don't use any chemicals such as pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides. Frogs are amphibians. They drink and breathe through their skin, and they also absorb anything their skin comes into contact into their bodies. So any chemicals you introduce into their environment can be very harmful to them. And after that, you just need to provide them with a shady secluded spot that has a small body of water, places to hide, and plenty of compost and leaf litter. A lot of compost and leaf litter will attract worms and other insects for the frogs to eat. So to show you how easy this is to do, I picked out a spot to put in a new frog conservation area. And this is just a corner in the back of the garden. And I think it's a good spot. This corner underneath this uh, Japanese quince bush is shady and secluded. And it's just the kind of spot where a frog could feel safe and secure. I'm expanding this out from inside the edge of the garden into the grass. And if you have a spot where you might want to put something like this, but there's grass, there is an easy way to work around that without having to break your back digging up the grass. All you have to do is cover the grass with a layer of cardboard. And then I cover the cardboard with a thick layer of compost from my compost bin. The grass will eventually die and just become part of the soil. And the cardboard will attract a lot of worms because they love to eat the decomposing cardboard. Okay. 
So now that I have the spot all prepared, I have a large plastic saucer that was originally meant to sit underneath a large houseplant pot. Once I decided where I wanted my body of water to be, I just dig out a section of the soil just deep enough for the top of this saucer to be level and even with the ground. After getting this saucer in, I covered the edges of the saucer with some flat rocks. And I put a few rocks inside the saucer to help the frogs climb in and out of it. For cover and security, I added a few pieces of wood, and I picked out a few pieces with some really nice hollows that will give the frogs places to hide. And to add some extra plant cover, I planted some coral bells and some hostas that I just transplanted from other places in the garden. And to finish it all off, I gave it all a good spraying and filled the pond with water. And this frog sanctuary is ready for visitors. So right now it's the middle of May and here where I live, it's the time when frogs and toads have come out of hibernation and are breeding. And after they finish breeding, they'll disperse from those breeding areas and travel great distances in search of food. And by the middle or end of June, I'll be seeing them all over the place back here. I'm sure that's going to be something that I can show you in another video later in the summer. So this is really a simple and inexpensive project that anyone can do and you'll be doing a lot of good for the environment and the frogs and toads around you. So that's all I have for today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it will inspire some of you to make your own frog conservation areas where you live. And if you do, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about it. So thanks for watching and until the next video, I'll see you later.